Hello everybody, this is Dawn here just to share, I hope briefly, um, this will be off the cuff. Um, I'm going to share about, you know, well, I want to share a message and particularly for those of you out there who are believers, who are followers of Jesus. Um, and particularly for those of you who are perhaps still, um, um, seeking to live um, in community and to walk by faith, not by sight, and to be as Jesus was to others, which, you know, hopefully is all of us who follow Jesus. And, um, yeah, this is really, you know, I, I actually don't want, don't want to do this right now. I don't even want to do it. And I've only, like, turned the video on and off three times today, and I've been struggling with this for three days, two days. Um, two days. So, um, yesterday I understood why, why this was so strong, um, right now. Um, it's partially an obvious reason in my life, but, um, it's just came in and like, whoop, um, really, really surprised me. And it's really a revisit of something that happened earlier in my life. If you've been following me for a while, you've probably heard about this ad nauseum and, um, you can read about the details of it in my book, Journey to Sacred Wholeness. But essentially, um, in 1998, um, I was asked to leave a faith fellowship, my community, my church community that myself and my um, son, who was then four, um, attended. It was very difficult. It came on the heels of a series of events in my life, some of which were public knowledge and others which were less widely known. <clears throat> but um, suffice it to say that at that time, I was really seeking to recover from um, some of that and gain back ground that was lost in my own healing process um, in the course of the things that had happened. Um, and um, I, and then I was, you know, suddenly in, in a very, to me, shocking kind of series of events that unfolded very, very quickly. I was... Not not even asked to leave. I was told to to leave this fellowship um, for some perceived wrong I had done that I never really got a straight answer on what that was, um, but some sort of feelings that were deemed inappropriate, <laughs> you know. And um, apparently, it wasn't even an action. It was just the feelings. Um, so anyway, and I see, I see you know, a little more about, um, perhaps what happened, um, but the impact on myself, um, and those I love was long lasting. And here I am like, uh, you know, honest to God, I thought, I really thought that I thought I had healed it to the extent I could heal it. I definitely feel like I have, um, forgiven some, um, the, the people who I know did certain actions, um, I feel like I've forgiven them. Um, I do still feel like I'm in the dark a little bit about that and several other things. So what I want to talk to you about today, though, is um, particularly for those of you who, who are followers of Jesus and who seek to extend the love of Christ to all, and in particular, those of you who are any sort in any sort of community, first of all, don't take that for granted. Treasure it. And I'm also making this video, quite honestly, because because Jesus keeps insisting that I speak to it, and. It kills me to do it, like sometimes, you know. Um, <clears throat> I'm just going to read. Um, so, um, there are two passages I want to share. Um, the first is one of my favorite um, passages. It is from 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 
For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands. Meanwhile, we groan, longing to be clothed instead with our heavenly dwelling, because when we are clothed, we will not be found naked. For while we are in this tent, we groan and are burdened, because we do not wish to be unclothed, but to be clothed instead with our heavenly dwelling, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. Now the one who has fashioned us for this very purpose is God, who has given us the Spirit as a deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. Therefore, we are always confident and know that as long as we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord, for we live by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and would prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So we make it our goal to please him, whether we are home in the body or away from it. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each of us may receive what is due us for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. Since then we know what it is to fear the Lord, we try to persuade others. What we are is plain to God, and I hope it is also plain to your conscience. We are not trying to commend ourselves to you again, but are giving you an opportunity to take pride in us, so that you can answer those who take pride in what is seen rather in, than in what than in what is in the heart. If we are out of our mind, as some say, it is for God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. For Christ's love compels us because we are convinced that one died for all and therefore all died. And he died for all that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone, the new is here. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against him. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. And then there's a, a chapter um, in Galatians, in Galatians chapter 6. I'm going to read the first part of that um, called, um, well, actually it's just about um, bearing one another's burdens and... Um, embodying what what Jesus taught goodness kindness compassion Paul wrote this um, brothers and sisters if someone is caught in a sin you who live by the spirit should restore that person gently but watch yourselves or you also may be tempted carry each other's burdens and in this way you fulfill the law of Christ if anyone thinks they are something when they are not they deceive themselves each one should test their own actions they can then take pride in themselves alone without comparing themselves to someone else, for each one should carry their own load. Nevertheless, the one who receives instruction in the world should share all good things with their instructor. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whoever sows to please their flesh from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the Spirit from the Spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. And then Paul goes on to talk about um, the practice of circumcision and how, you know, that was being used as an, um, a marker of, you know, what was true versus who was not. Um, and he reminds us again that what counts is the new creation, that we are made new in, in Jesus, and um, that it is about the grace of Christ that sustains us. So I want to go back to this um, idea of the church just to say that it is so easy for us to um, to band together in groups, and this isn't just about the church, by the way. This this happens in society. It also happens in um, all sorts of circles, um, and often in communities that um, claim to be about um, the new creation, about about you know spiritual 
uh, partnership or sisterhood or about uh, love and life and light and about um, oneness. Um, and yes, it does happen among followers of Jesus. And it's really vital. It's really vital that things like this not be left hanging. Um, yes, I am speaking personally, but I have experienced this. But if I set that aside, the fact is, even in places where I have not experienced it personally, where I've witnessed it, or where I've seen it, it only brings harm. Yes, there is the person who is on the receiving end of whatever the rejection or the um, isolation or the, the barriers that have been put up are, but it's far, far more harmful than that. You see, it hurts us. When we separate another, it hurts us, every single one of us. I don't care if you're, you know, the person who is behind the, um, the, alienation or ostracization of another, whether you um, are in that inner circle that just simply everybody raises their hand and says, yes, I vote for this because someone has persuaded you of such, or whether you are on the periphery, or whether you hear of it secondhand. I believe wholeheartedly that if we are, if we proclaim to be a follower of Jesus Christ, we cannot let that happen. Not to any one person, not to the least of these, not to anyone, ever. It, not in a way in which there is not love that is a part um, of that. Pro well, not at all, not at all. To me, isolation, alienation, excommunication, uh, rejection, judgment, unmerciful actions, it, it's just not consistent. How can we proclaim to live um, and to, uh, to be aligned with the gospel of Jesus Christ and do these things? It makes no sense to me. And yeah, it, the, the emotion is definitely coming from my own personal experience. And like I said, I didn't, I don't want to do this. I don't want to talk about this. But Jesus asked me to. And I know a lot of you don't like hearing that. I don't like it either sometimes. He knows that. He knows that. But I will be faithful to what he has asked me to do. You know, um, there's a quote, let me find it here. Um, there's a quote from Scott Peck, and I don't remember what book this came from, but it says this. It says, paradoxically, a group of humans becomes healing and converting only after its members have learned to stop trying to heal and convert. Community is a safe place precisely because no one is attempting to heal or convert you to fix you, to change you. Instead, the members accept you as you are. You are free to be you, and being so free, you are free to discard dis defenses, masks, disguises, free to seek your own psychological and spiritual health, free to become your whole and holy self. That's the kind of community that I thought I belonged to, and I see that that was not the case. And that's the kind of community that I long to experience myself. And that's the kind of community that I want to be a part of co-creating. And to be honest, I don't know. I don't know that it's possible. So if you watch this video, and you believe it is, then be, be the one who stands up for the ones that Jesus stood for. Be the one who moves forward in alignment with that true vine in which we find our being and becoming. The gift of 
you know, the gift of I guess the light of the world that was the life and the truth and the way. I want to write about this I just don't have the heart to right now. So here you go. That's all I have. I'm sure Jesus will tell me to come back and say more. <laughs> I can actually feel him laughing with me right now and telling me it's all right. So, you know, the reason this is so emotional for me is, um, I didn't realize it until the middle of these, you know, this last couple of days. Um, first of all, some things happened um, that left me again feeling sort of like, <laughs> what? Um, and um, yesterday I realized it was, um, I think it was exactly 19 years ago. Um, so the church asked me uh, to leave, kicked me out um, in the fall of I believe 1998 and everything was just in, in great turmoil and I honestly I couldn't get my head around it I couldn't understand it at all and so um, I was really deeply disturbed quite frankly about what had happened and, and deeply grieving um, trying my best to heal trying to raise my son and and help him to understand that this was not about God um, and I'm I don't don't know that I succeeded with that but um, but in any case um, six months later it was in in February on February I'd written a letter um, that went unaddressed for I don't know a long time a month maybe and I received a response my letter was please help me to understand this um, in the name of Jesus, please help me to understand this. And on February the 5th, I got a response, and it was two sentences. That didn't address any of my questions, but simply said, you know, we have decided that this is best, period. You know, goodbye. <laughs> It was unbelievably cold. I had also asked for someone to talk to myself and my son. And the truth of it is yesterday, um, today too, <laughs> clearly, but yesterday it was really hurting. I don't know why it's back so strong. Actually, I do understand a little bit of why. Um, it's connected to some other things that are um, up again in my life and So I was sitting with it, and so I wasn't doing so well. And so I reached out to people that I thought would pray for me and who would understand. They were either people who knew what had happened and who had seemed to be supportive of me in the past. or people I trusted. And, you know, while I didn't expect immediate replies from everybody, <laughs> um, Jesus asked me to reach out and I did. And I didn't get many replies. And it was, um, yeah, it was really painful, really painful. And yes, I do understand quite clearly that the pain, the emotional pain, my emotional pain body, if you will, is for sure, the, the, the feeling there and the emotion there is for sure connected to previous emotional experiences likely rooted in my early, early childhood, 
um, aware a little bit of, of some of those in a general sense. I've done a lot of healing around those. Clearly, maybe not all that I need to, and I've been working with that the last couple of days. But the fact is that none of us is intended to do this alone. We're intended to bear each other's burdens and to open our arms to each other and to be that community to one another. And I just hope that somehow, um, I, do, I don't intend for this to be about like, oh, let's feel sorry for Dawn. I don't need anybody to reach out to me, okay? Except if you're one of those people I emailed, it would be nice to perhaps hear back from you. Um, yeah. I just, my heart is, my heart is with Jesus and who he was and who he is and how he stands with me and with you when you are hurting like this or anything, about anything. It doesn't have to be about, you know, being rejected from a church. And, you know, it's not like I'm waiting for a please come back Dawn letter. <laughs> it's just not. Um... Yeah, I mean, I do see through the illusions, and I see the games for sure, and I see the power, and I see the crazy, crazy uh, codependent functioning and um, right, collusion. Um, that is not about Jesus. I wrote a song, I think, in, uh, in a couple of um, weeks after everything, and it's about, you know, this holy house, the devil's den. <laughs> it's very, very harsh, but truly how I saw it. And um, now it just breaks my heart. It breaks my heart that this should happen anywhere in the world for anybody, anytime. It breaks my heart to see it perpetuated. It breaks my heart. Through all the centuries and all of the eons of humanity and just in my life. It breaks my heart what's been lost and yeah, I want a place where you're free to become your whole and holy self and I know some of you watching are going to tell me that place exists and it's your church. Maybe, but a lot of you would tell me that, you know, <sighs> ah, let's just leave it at that. I talk about life and the life that Jesus is to me because I truly believe it. Because I know it to be true. And I want us all to know that. And I want to live from the ministry of reconciliation. And I want to be a part of finding out what it is to be in community and to have true community. I don't know if that'll ever happen. But it is a vision I have. 